Hello, Mega Damage back for another Hong Kai Star Rate video. Star. Wait, you said you got this, right? Okay, that's what I was like. Because I got a discovery site. Like, okay, last time, well, we we tried to fight um, our guy Trey right there with no voice. That I think is a bug. I don't know I can tell. Oh well. Anyways, I thought the voice actor was not there. Oh well. And also, we play a bunch of these uh, contests. Thing so we can get to the fucking stadium. Stay in the fucking stadium because the stud around is here. So now we'll continue and reach the finish line. Try me, Himiko, and uh, March. Bro, we also did like Sarah's voice acting. <laughs> it was stellar, I tell you. <laughs> So, did we win? Congratulations to the Galactic Baseballer and Firefly on becoming this Scorch Sand Festival Champion! That's amazing. Is that Robin right there? Oh, we're going to get interview. Oh my gosh. Oh, here we go. Okay. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this eye. On behalf of the organizers, Uh, I was saying, <laughs> where are my center jeans? <laughs> Your endeavors are worthy of extra recognition, and I've taken steps to ensure that. However, this reward is not a material one, but rather the opportunity, as previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about both I and the Oak family. Can... <sighs> Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Penacony does require change, but not as you He propose. seems a bit different, honestly. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert no, to a fair, place he's characterized so by chaos, sure. disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated. Equality non-existent. Common folk living precarious. Ultimately, only heroes like yourself. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacony would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest? Or a sweet dream paradise for all? There's nothing wrong being the fittest. I don't know why you're saying that. There's nothing wrong being the fittest. Uh, that's not the point! Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, Now's not exactly the time to be holding an ext- The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacony. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, this way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all pre- Let's talk about our tribulations and, and our final course of action. So what happened to Robin?
Because I know she will come back because I saw the trailer. The wild. You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the charm of festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the in- hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great do you have any I'd like to ask did you really not know of this hmm. I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me I mean Quite astonishing. I mean who else but you would not know about it knowing people are you and Sunday if I have offended the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies but the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry we're doing this out of concern for the dreamscapes safety so if you could please alleviate our concerns dream master it's just to prove that the charmony festival has nothing to do with the stellaron if we're being overly cautious <sighs> sunday Robin, I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as the most devout advocates. I already know the magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire of Sunday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in the... I will do as you command. Robin, could I trust you to be present as a witness, to document the truth? I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out. Oh, triple-faced soul. Please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies. Let, Let us begin. begin. Understood? Question. Have you devoted your life to your god? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself? Always heeding their... Naturally. Have you strayed from the path? Ex Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god? Coveting? Never. Then, a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vow, they have seen your faith, and have it. Just a moment. What? I have another question. I hope to my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned. Are they truly Shipe? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king, embracing solidarity and unity under their all duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this, if not for perfectly harmonize it? Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. Oh, wow. Well, now this is interesting. In the distant past, there existed an Eon with 
One flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Mm -hmm. Later, they fell. The root traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, echoes of bygone dissonance may... Mr. Yang, being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when... So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause someday. What? Huh, well, okay, sure. Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. So, this is the true reason I can't. We were never children of the harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss oh, well. can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. <laughs> uh, of course, of course. Well, at least Yang was... He's perceptive, isn't he? Quite so. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civil... And through harmony, we obtain order. Wow. Yeah, he was suspicious from the very beginning, so, you know. Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the Order on Pentagon. What have you done with Mr. Y Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an end. Should we need to stand against the Nameless? It would only be myself and the Oak family involved. Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone, and have been widely observed. You want to talk turn with us? Smart kid. You're just as sharp as the other one. If it is the Order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of love. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle. Establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we... Oh. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done wait, wait, such wait, a wait, thing. Wait, 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 what? Okay, that's not just in the world of the principal established well-being. Humanity stops corpses downtown. Only we are crew to put an end of this force. Oh. Yeah, it's like it's very vague, but you can you can read between the lines of that. Yeah. Okay. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road... Huh? Where'd he go? Welcome. This isn't any location in Panacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. 
The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Oh. So who am I in my <laughs> Oh, how is their inner self like this? Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so she should understand what it entails. Wait. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. Ah, uh, the door of Robin? From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced, I believe, after going through similar predicaments. Let's begin. The first... This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster. And the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Panacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to later on. Robin and I lived the time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, that baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, we decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard. Not to mention the many poison. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. Its destiny was determined by... Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Fate stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell, or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost... I eagerly await your... Uh, okay, build the bird's nest on the spot, or build a cage for those. Hmm. That one will lead to his death, though. Hmm. Let me ask you. <sighs> that guy just casually throws this kind of question at us. If it were me, I guess after all, leaving it there. It's hmm. Yeah, I'd like to even see your, your perspectives. It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning. Back to the question. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. But if it can't even live to that point, then there. his intentions right now but even if I was gonna release it back into the sky it'd have to be strong enough to fly first if I left it where I found it I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever huh. All right. so the conclusion will be the similar build the, the bird nest of a spot but birds like fly in the sky as well, so build a cage for the little charming you know. though. It looks a bit, a very, a bit more distorted. But 
nature take his course. It would be funny if I just go against his very wish. Oh, that would be funny. Or should I do this one? Oh, very undecisive. Very distorted. That, that, that's what's been throwing me off. It wasn't distorted, and I don't know. This one's not as distorted. Actually, it kind of looks distorted. Yeah. All right. What to pick? Build a nest. The nest. It'll, it'll die if it's like winter though. And a small one. A cage for the little tree. Nurture or the Yeah, I guess so. Or a cage built for the or a cage to feed it and feed it most care. Think of this one so one time. Okay. So I can look over the let me see that one. Okay. Stick the original plan. Build a nest. With the soft nest. With it. Okay. Where are the... So, let's... It won't fly, though. It, ne it needs, like, a lift to fly for it to fly. So, a cage. To give the closest to his, his natural state. I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. We passionately nursed it back to health. Preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left, I watched it for a long while by the window. Probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little char- Finally, on the 137th attempt, it succeeded, but its attempt did not go perfectly. The fall shattered its wings. It writhed helplessly in my embrace, but it was all for naught. Finally succumbing to a painful demise, I deeply regret the choices we made. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia. A position exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents, and providing it was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy, sorrow, oh, yeah, I remember that scene. arrogance, regret, the complex tapestry of human nature that formed. He was a dream chaser and an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life, except he told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land. If he had a plan in place, he would buy back his children once he had made his fortune yeah. and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself after hearing the dream chaser's story i immediately appealed to the bloodhound family to cease their pursuit that way at least he could live peacefully i'll tell you the outcome soon will you do as i did and try to convince the bloodhound family to stop their pursuit or will you remain silent leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels until I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome. I already know my decision, but you know. But I'd like to hear your perspective, doesn't it? Well, it seems illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacone. He sold his kids to chase a dream. With that thought, there's only one... Yup. A dream chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would pro- But what cruel repercussion would this choice result in? This question. 
question. Surely it has some connection to the baby bird story. And this connection is precisely the breakthrough Sunday aims to use to persuade us. Yep. I'd probably choose to ask the blood. Deceased their pursuit. Remain silent and enforce the law. But will that be order? Hmm. But that that will be kindness as well. It seems you, like me, are pondering whether a different choice could have led to a better outcome. Say he never gets caught. He would only die from delirium. The methods with which illegal stowaways enter dreams are unorthodox. Not flawless like the hotels. Living in the dreamscape would be a near pipe dream. So, um, um, Firefly, how'd he enter it? Should he be apprehended? Could the hounds afford to turn a blind eye? The answer is a definitive no. They couldn't bear as to your choice. I once again offer them the story this time. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current dream master. And as for his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister. Of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue. Do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the Harmony. And to... She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song. And was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray... Is she alright? If the operation was successful, she should probably be weak by the eon above. The bullet struck uh, her neck directly. Uh, yet, I think possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony, it didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write those damn savages. I'll pack my... Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments. This happen? It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, likewise, hmm. I prepared one last question. One last choice. Because this is merely a figment of imagination, a nightmare. Would you still support Robin's journey? Yes. A thousand times yes. I can't believe that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak. Hmm. I often feel like I've dreamt of similar scenes on certain nights. In the dream, I see blurry faces I don't know who they are but I sympathize with all of them fighting for survival against some their confusion and fear are lucid to me 
But I also remember they chose never to give up. Just like Miss Robin. If Mr. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled, you should find the answer from your own experience with each trailblaze. Dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? Would you stop March and Don Hung from reaching their next destination? Hmm. No. Miss Robin's courage is admirable. And here I put the fact that she's also Mr. Sunday's younger sister. No, I doubt he'd wish harm on his own flesh and blood. So... Support Robin to go on her journey. I'll go a thousand times, yes. Make the decision. <laughs> I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms. Oh. Hmm. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Huh. Good question. Uh, yeah. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion. A cage huh? known as self-worth. What? People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influence. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison, a place dictated on nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as a that is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. Mm, yeah, well, about no. <laughs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on... During these hard-earned rest days, people are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life, allowing... And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. Uh, no, really. Depends. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting. Com From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. Then you just get idleness. An eternal Sabbath day. You used to have an eternal Sabbath. But people need to work. Society needs to function. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. And thus, every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. What? Meanwhile, some seek Silver refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way 
Can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit? You know, it... living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. You know, you know, I'm starting to have a feeling that he won't be some. He won't be summable. I don't know. I think he's going to die. <laughs> Everyone kill him. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome. <sighs> But what is the price? The cost is minute, merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary wakening until the end of the cosmos. Hmm. Wakening? Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. No, that's just running away from the problem. Oh gosh, Th this is like escapism on a whole different level. <laughs> but in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's heart. True, but you won't get anything done if you just escape escapism. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature. And from there, show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, perhaps in your mind, you are... <laughs> because I don't think... Are you Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Oh. Oh, wait, wait. So, are we going to hear what McHale actually said? Not long ago. What is this? Does this place ring any bells? I. I don't know. It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories and a dream bubble. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know pet. Hmm. I, I don't know much about dream bubbles. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko. I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? Uh, Misha, Mikhail, it sounds similar, doesn't it? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this... This is the... This face looks a bit familiar. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death. 
which we now know as Dormancy. Considering its connection to Dreamflux Reef, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So, identifying them is cr- We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Nisha some time, as I believe- All right, but there are doors all over the place. Hmm. I guess... Maybe this way? <laughs> You're just guessing this way. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but... Let's give it a try. Okay. Wait, you managed to choose the right door on your first try? Weird. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just, I feel like I've been here before and even lived here for a while. Look at his eyes, look like a, it's like a door like a um, hole. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by the end, and the room on the other side was the toy room. I hold on. This doesn't make sense. This could be a case of amnesia. But don't worry, Nisha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just since this place seems familiar to you. Yeah, then let Okay, but if, oh, I can't even, I thought I could change the, but I can't. It's like, I want to change the character, but I was like, no, I can't. Okay. It was a fireplace. Mikhail, that's the name? So, who is he talking to? I'm sorry, I don't know much about the watchmaker. Anything special about Mikhail is... Grandpa? But we haven't heard anything about the watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Could you tell us more about your... Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who... He didn't want me to call him Grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise. Both renowned every time he came back. He'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the water. So where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been... So where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dreamville? So you need this here sick. Okay, McKay. some noises from the room you and oregon yeah it's a member of the compass crew uh, just like clocky and miss mirror and there's more than just one origami bird they are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same uh is that why there's a bunch of origami birds in the district they follow miss mirror's orders to handle all sorts of jobs on the ship they're the sailors could you tell us more about the compass? The compass is a ship bound for the new world. Clocky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in dream. Huh? Oh, that does seem weird. I... <laughs> Perhaps Clocky. I think... 
I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. This is an Argaya made for you. I will protect you from harm. Protect me freely. Just as I did with Kwaki. Water resembles a precious jewel, and every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves... Have you recalled anything, Mi? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side. And the difficulties at sea didn't seem... Uh, you know... Don't get sad, you'll start getting... You don't, don't sigh, you'll start getting gray hair. <laughs> hey, don't tease! I was just... Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house... Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made back then. I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would... Uh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has... Yeah, based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his child- But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an ocean- Could this be... some- I'm sorry. I don't know, but... I perhaps I'll... I'll... Share your burden. side right no we should turn left here uh-huh something feels different about this place this is it I remember this corridor up ahead is Grandpa's study. Don't it was me. in that room that I saw him the last time. Captain Misha, you are now him. The atmosphere in this room feels- Misha! You finally come! Clocky. Clocky! Here he is! Are those books on the bookshelf log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he, he described our world as a fountain. At some point, to ensure that everyone had land to settle on. On that day, he- called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere, and told me- What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky, an ocean of stars. He spoke of a train. He said that he knew the crew on the train and that he had asked them to take me along. He's- A train? A it's- It's the Astral Express! I- Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. 
It was his cherished treasure, appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, he said. As long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. The distant sound of a train whistle. Exactly, Misha! And then... Yeah. Uh... Huh. But in the end, we arrived at a new world. We many times we lost our way so many times. Let's continue. Now even the sea can stop us. Now we're heading towards the correct direction. Finally out of the ocean and our destination. Yeah, yeah, this seems very somber. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're so Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard. Hey, the shape seems to match. Looks like we're just one step from a... Alright. Broken door thing. Enter the dreamscape. This is it. This. While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions. Clark, I... So, this building in the dream bubble... Yes, but this dream bubble itself... <laughs> wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Yeah, you're the only one in the dark. So, the bubble itself... Marge, do you remember when she mentioned the clocky that only she could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a child. The answer lies in the Astral Express. Her experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had. Wait, really? I, I, I thought it was just a childlike wonder. A medic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like. But Misha can see clocky too, right? They even grew up together. That's the key to the mystery, March. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew? Uh, wait. That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unco- So it's not that the watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather the stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard was the sound of the ex- That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. How about we start with your name? Now should we call you Misha or- Mikhail. Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, I was born on Lushaka in the Presmere system, adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. <laughs> oh wow, I kind of figured that that was going to be the case. Like, because Misha and Mikhail sounds way too similar. So uh, I knew there was going to be a connection, but I didn't think this was going to be the connection. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar. So, you're. Unfortunately. That legendary figure is no more. 
I am only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. A friend of Clocky. A young apprentice. And this also marks the beginning of it. At the, the end, end of the, the journey, journey, I left this, this little flame, flame which I so, so cherished, cherished, in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, dreams hoping, hoping to, to pass, pass it off. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all, all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion. <laughs> Because he was born with a desire to... I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it. And that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in her dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy? Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's, that's what, what every... But in the end, end you've found me. I'm, I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my will. If I, I may apologize, apologize, the Stellaron part, part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more, more than, than a baseless, baseless rumor. rumor. I, I left my, my homeland, homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends and I built the original Pentacony and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end. So it's so, so exists. And I left behind so no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose now that you're well aware of the current situation of Pentacony, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path all I have for you is a story and two gifts. All right. I, want I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward, and has been penned in my hat too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head, and now it's time for you to make your choice. Once you've made up your mind, Open, Open that, that door, door and, and enter, enter the, the long dream of an old man. I'll be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. Huh. I kind of wish he would be brought in with us. All right, everyone. Let's make a deal. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. I want to witness the legacy. Of course. We've come this far. Surely there's no- In that case, it's then, let's proceed together to the end of this dream, and tell Mikhail our dis- I, I want to see his dream. Alright. Yeah, this is getting interesting. I didn't think I'd be that long. Talking about the legacy and all that shit. Someone has to step up and save Rushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go. And if you must, please... Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer? Now go, board that train, and start your journey. <laughs> Where are you going, Mikhail? I, I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, 
Yeah? I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be... It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Huh. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards... Don't worry. Not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of trailblaze will continue. Wait, what's that? Mean? The friend Hani needs us. <laughs> yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. Uh, but why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Where are you going, watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Fanagoni. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have. Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Penacone? But what will happen to Penacone if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking... We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. If I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next one. Where are you going, old man? Galaxy. Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great... Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but... You're the last remaining... If you die too, the, the secret of the Stellar... Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacone. So I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Estana. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade. And send invitation. So, a desperate struggle against the family. How? Oh, yeah. How did the family even came to to be? Because I don't think the Watchmaker will want that to happen. Desperate. <laughs> don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, make sure to send an invitation. Misha. It's you, Clocky. Ten last night, I had a long dream about... Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember? Of course. You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watch... Yes, but what I... I was a kid. And there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. And that's what... Yeah. Every night. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me. It was... Oxo, your name and the watchmaker. 
<sighs> We've arrived at Dream Flux Reef. So, where to next? You know, Clocky, I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. Traveled far enough, and it's home. So, <laughs> no, I'll stay here. And then, this. This is where it ends. You told me that the trail play. Yeah, that's what I said. So now. It's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I can follow Misha? <laughs> you're acting weird today. <laughs> if, if you're feeling down, we can just... <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork? Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. So, do you know what... Hmm. Hmm. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage, whether it's calming, joyful, angry or or sad all they need is a little nudge to take that step toward their oh, i'm true. leaving that little nudge with you and i hope you'll share it with others especially hanyu <laughs> he was just like hmm. such is the essence of clockwork the will of the trailblaze <laughs> clocky's hands spin around non-stop Indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your hands, hands always, always pointing ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Trailblazing means taking paths your predecessors foreswore and venturing even further. The Peniconium Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. The fuck? <laughs> the fuck? That was so fucking amazing! <laughs> a glance at Penacony at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the trail place? Or perhaps the bond? Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen eons, who will hold the future of Penacony. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penacony, and the 107,336 members of the Oak family. I'm extending a... I'm cordially inviting you all to the Panacone Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on the center stage. Since the future of the Stellaron, Panacone, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then <laughs> show me their courage and determination. All right, I'm going to beat the crap and get the smug smile on your face. Oh. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> I can just start the trial, wow. Well, let me just do that. Let me just start the trial just for the sheep ale eh? hails from the celestial worlds recite a path of harmony near the nation and tell that preach joy Oh, she keeps the hat. <laughs> Hello, Dino. Guy. We need a strategy. Oh, is that tree thing? I, I am in the path of the harmony. So Time to test our rapport. Dreams do come true. Enemy targets detected. <clears throat> oh. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is just. <laughs> this is pretty fun. Let's improvise. Oh. The mood is set just right. Let the show begin. Clocky. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I love the like everyone's like looking. It's like what the fuck is wrong with me? Enough. It's time. Enemy data secured. Net markers activated. Time for a good old counterattack. Of the ten lords, execute the Marastruck. <laughs> Let's kick things off with you. Take your positions. <laughs> Is that an <gasps> <laughs> oh, wow, that's amazing. Okay, execution. Good brew, my friends. <laughs> he's, Indulge he's, yourself. Just using all the <laughs> skills right here. <laughs> also in dance mode. That was amazing. I don't know how I get the uh, ones with like Robin's like a little song thing. Where do you even get this? The rubber. Alright. Um, Firefly? Does that mean he wants? 
wants to fight us during- I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Ark villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something- Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy and genuinely wants to prove that the order is right. Yep. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the up. He won't, but he's such a gentle one. If you why so nice? <laughs> I flex on the wound I'm too horrible when I get <laughs> moment arrives you hesitate we've even dealt with a lord ravager of the destruction anyway we can't leave the stellaron unchecked this is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacony and fulfilled now that we've taken up the mantle however the same applies to the order their plan didn't materialize over a desire to dream to slumber, they've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an eon. This con- What do you mean? I believe Firefly is trying to say- Mm-hmm. Yep. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a because one of the lines said... Three times?! <laughs> the first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy. Which led to all subsequent events. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And I am prepared to face it. Only... By achieving victory in this battle, can we secure a future for Penacony? The most terrible form? The true death. Where everyone in Penacony loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to- Have you made up your mind? Yes. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. Yeah. Farewell. Earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot mm. sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame, my feet are stiff. May we meet, meet again, again in reality. reality. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Super Sentai. After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. That's your next stop. Land of the dreams. I hope you... <laughs> you mean... Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. <laughs> you want to die so badly. Well, I want to live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. We have to choose. Do you exist just to pick? Are you not the same, Blade? If I were to die now, I would only, though its definition escapes me, is it? This the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? <laughs> is, is Blade your counselor now? Can be carved I know he's an old man, but then he's <laughs> neither. Uh, such teenage angst. The tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. It will bear the name Firefly. That was that, that was amazing. I'm proud of that isn't it, yeah, because I know the battle's gonna be fucked. 
Intense. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The Nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those Nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, but in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? Is it, well, I don't know if they really meant it, but if longing for freedom means go, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. <laughs> oh, I almost here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. Huh. No, then. warm here, isn't it? You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. <laughs> I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place. It's a shame these berries don't have much... Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes... A... <clears throat> Have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things. Like, before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed, the flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but... It left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these... Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least I haven't completely lost my... Well, congratulations on it. By the way... No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> she... Well... Condolences. I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely won me to say goodbye with a smile. That's proof that you're grieving. Or... Afraid. I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. 30 Just days? Like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing into an arm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this... Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strut as long as this red color still lingers. I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off my... <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. 
That's truly pure nihility. Huh. Uh, is it really? I don't know much about nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire do I realize that... When will this rain? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. Huh. Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung? It's one of the Paradise Kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony. A sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu Major and Minors this half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that... Everyone on the planet. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. Maybe the I would disagree. Biori Scamandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is... If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is... What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The harmony here... Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Tazeron, the propagation, brought endless havoc to huh. the universe. And it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. The propagation and the order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain eon. Um, the Trailblaze? Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Borgeroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind? But I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Penacony. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, trying to resurrect a fallen... I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the... Whoa. This is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave as Donna right away? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to... Con mm. Time is... I have another plan. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of allying up? Exactly. The assistance from the Lorfu Cloud Knights would be... Think it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once in a life. Oh, wow, this is going to be amazing. Huh. That's, uh... Abundance. Yeah, that's just something for that abundance. Three hours. <laughs> I want to pause it already. Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are getting... This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes? <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? 
You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival. In our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Huh. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Huh, is it really? <sighs> is this? Of course. Yes, the opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony. And with I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same... So, it's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have doomed. I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun bathed in my light. My people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. Like, um, what the fuck happened? Did, did he just grow old and died, or what, what happened? To this <laughs> is the interior of the Penacony Grand The- It's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad. But why is the venue- And not only that, the entire theater is- Uh, was a plum hot the mock offices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many tickets? Hey, that's not what we should be concerned about. Let's explore around. <sighs> oh, yeah, the watchmaker's hat. The atmosphere here is so creepy and unsettling. Even if there's no audience yet, there should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? Uh, well, I think you know why. I should end it soon, though. Huh. Yeah. I guess I'll do this uh, one thing.
was like, oh, no, come on. They won't start losing, will they? So yeah, is this a fashion store or something? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, you're so annoying. Are these puppets part of the stage setup? <laughs> Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. <laughs> uh. Something feels off. There's no other grand theater. So Sunday's messing with us? My apologies for... <laughs> I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a state... History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true... Within it, naturally. Let us commence with the dawning of the war. After the dusk wars, darkness veiled the sky and chaos consumed the earth. Anna, the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. That marked the first day. Wait, is this supposed to be like um, the Bible? I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> it always feels weird when Christianity is used. They gathered nebulae and forged them into picks, thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys, and the sun rose. Strike the black keys, and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second day. Yeah, I'll go all the way to the sixth day. Seven to the rest. The puppets are gathering around the frame. Are they expecting us to enter it? Yep. Where are we now? The atmosphere here looks similar to some. This act is named Ode to Prisoner. Given the act, I thought things were finally looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expedition. <laughs> but now it looks like you, you, you're, you're behind bars. I didn't know that. I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? Well, let's start with the time when Penacony was still a frontier prison. Well, it seems, it seems like this is going to lead to the final clash. I'll probably really end it here. So, I'll see you next time. I'm going to turn this out. Bye!